Hi there, and welcome to another Cigar Advisor Cigar Review Panel, Cigar Review. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor at CigarAdvisor.com, and today we're going to be smoking the Scorpion by Camacho Robusto, Connecticut. The question is, how delicious is its stain? To find out, let's meet our delightful panelists. Hey, he's got that old devil moon in his eyes. Please give a warm welcome to Jared Gulick. He's the guy they're actually referring to in the hashtag, my sex life and movie titles. It's Tommy Z, man, everybody. <laughs> I appreciate that. Ow. He never met a bowl of pasta bajoule he didn't like. It's John Poole. That's true. Less and less of a bean guy these days. Though. <laughs> that's right, like, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. We are smoking the Scorpion by Camacho, Connecticut Robusto. And notice it's Scorpion by Camacho. Okay. There's a reason for that. The Scorpion has been their logo, their motto, their uh, image, whatever, their, uh, mm -hmm. for um, some years now. It's been since 2013. Mm -hmm. So they decided, hey, we're going to give the Scorpion like their own line. But this is really uh, designed to deliver the bold flavor. This is according to the company. Designed to deliver bold flavor and unmatched construction without sting to the wallet. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is here, they're, they're making a very well-made cigar and it's not as expensive as something that might be similar or, or other things that okay. might be in their catalog. So um, actually the price of this cigar, the Robusto, the retail price just for the Robusto is six fifty. dollars The average price of these cigars, I'll give you that in a minute, the, uh, the cigar is a 5 by 50 Robusto. It is uh, wrapped in an Ecuador, Connecticut shade wrapper. The binder is Nicaraguan, and the fillers are Nicaraguan and Honduran. Hmm. This uh, Scorpion by Camacho comes in three sizes. Robusto, which we're smoking. The Gordo, there's Gordo, it's 6 by 60. Mm -hmm. And a Super Gordo, it's 7 by 70. So that's Jeez. what makes it super? That sure so makes it's it big super. and that's, bigger. That's a big cigar. <laughs> wow. Does that come with batteries? It's final sizes. <laughs> oh my God, it's coming toward me. <laughs> now they're presented in boxes of ten only. Okay. And, and uh, what the big and tall section? Yeah. yeah. Jeez. And uh, you can get them in five packs, but the Super Gordo doesn't come in a five pack. It's just too much for the five pack. <laughs> a five pack cannot contain it. And if you it. average them all together, they're about seven fifty a cigar, regardless of the size you like. So that's pretty decent. It's well under ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I'm going to start with Tommy. We're going to talk about what we're getting out of the cigar so far. We've just lit them up, so what are we getting so far? Tom, you, you, you've got a little uh, ash on yours already. So. What? Watch your mouth there, Gary. This is a family show. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I do. The, and I had said to you that I thought um, a previous one of these that I had smoked, I thought the ash was a little flaky, but this is like could not be any more solid. The construction is excellent mm. on this cigar. Now, I've always loved Camacho cigars, and their whole thing is always bold. And you know what I remember years ago, and I don't remember how many, 10 plus years ago, when the Connecticut came out, all right, the Connecticut wrapped Camacho. And I was like, wow, this isn't like any Connecticut, because it's, it's really full bodied. But this one, I think, might be, uh, we're not supposed to use the word mild. I'll replace it with mellow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, might be the mellowest Camacho ever made. No, but it's not light. It's not, uh, it's more medium bodied. I think every single Camacho I've ever smoked, and I've smoked them all, is a full bodied cigar. That doesn't mean they're all super strong, but they are all. Right. I don't think this one's full bodied. Uh, this has a, a distinct creaminess to it. The wrapper's really, really nice, but very, very creamy on the mouthfeel and everything. And, um, Interesting because I was reading our the description on the famous smoke shop site, and mm -hmm. I tell you what, uh, one of you guys wrote that, and I was like, it was dead on to what I'm getting. A tobacco sweetness that's really, really noticeable, a little bit of pepper, um, kind of like a little smokiness too to it, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean, almost like a little charness, but a re really flavorful. A uh, really interesting effort by Camacho. I like it a lot. I would smoke this cigar every day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jared, how about you? Uh, I'm actually getting some saltier nuances. And you said in, when you were 
that they were looking for bolder flavors with this? Well, I'm not, you know, uh, that's their, you know, yeah. their, their, their image. <laughs> the hype. You know, that, yeah, the hype, exactly. Uh, yeah. This is this is definitely on, on the mellow end of the spectrum for me. Uh, it's kind of cedary. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of salty. And one thing that's uh, an interesting attribute to this is that the retro is like silk. Like a lot of cigars, even mellower cigars, tend to be very mm -hmm. peppery on the retro sure. or spicy. This I'm getting nothing. It's just huh. nothing. It's got some, maybe like even a slight floral note to it, but it's mostly just like a cedary smoothness. Okay. Excellent cigar. Interesting. Okay. I'm here to maybe agree a little, maybe disagree a okay. little. Okay. All right. So on the pre-light, one thing I did notice, the typical Connecticut bitterness that you might get uh, from some other more mellow cigars was not there. And some of those creaminess, not as creamy for me. I'm about an inch in so far. Mm. Uh, barnyard, a little grassy, a little sweet. Uh, that tobacco sweetness that one I will agree is a little bit of a crisp fruit, almost kind of like an huh. apple. Like maybe that's that saltiness, right? I mean, it, it just kind of hit my palate as a little bit tangy. But you know, Camacho being bold, it's always renowned for its spice. It's only a bit, just a bit of this peppery spice. And just to kind of piggyback on top of what uh, Tommy was talking about, if you were wondering maybe what is the difference between the Camacho Connecticut, which you know some could argue that kind of jump started this new wave of you know new breed of Connecticut, right? That they're bolder, not your grandpa's blah blah blah, mm. right? The difference between the Camacho Scorpion Connecticut and the Camacho Connecticut, both are very well made. Both are, I would say, uh, woody and sweet. But the Camacho Connecticut is a little bit stronger, a little bit more leathery, a little bit creamier. Whereas this one, its sweetness is more tart sweet, mm. and I would find it that it has a little bit less spice, a little bit more on the floral. So okay. let's call this, if you thought Camacho Connecticut was a good starter cigar, this, this, even better. If you are a first timer, mm. or if you are looking for something to recommend to somebody, I would bypass Camacho Connecticut and go right for the Scorpion Connecticut. I think so too. I, 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 we we said that, that earlier. Yeah. And please, John, I, I, I don't appreciate you referring to my grandfather's blah blah blah. Not, on the, <laughs> not in this video, thank you. Well, I was I was even telling you earlier that uh -huh. I had I wished that this had been the first cigar that I ever smoked because I actually started with a I think it was a CAO that was stronger, but um, this is a, this is like almost like the quintessential onboard cigar right here. This has got a lot of flavor without being heady, without being overpowering, without being spicy. If you're looking for something to get into tobacco on the ground level, this is it right here. Well, I uh, agree in terms of the, the body and the, the strength. Um, in fact, I would even say it flies in the face of their mm -hmm. live loud motto, right? Mm -hmm. Just live mm -hmm. loud, hashtag live loud, right? Um, I would say if this had a volume level, it would be somewhere between four and seven. Something like that. But okay. can you dance? So it's not so loud. <laughs> can you? I could dance to this. You know why? Yeah. I think the key word here is accessible. It's, mm -hmm. it's an accessible yes. smoke. So you know, we're, for as much as we're, we're talking here about uh, starter cigars, you know, you're looking at a couple of guys who routinely smoke anywhere between one and three cigars a day. Uh, could I make this my morning or my early afternoon cigar? Without a doubt. Could I make this yeah. for something in the evening? Absolutely. If I wanted to chill with a cup of coffee and it's like a, a, a late evening smoke mm -hmm. or something like that, this could easily do the job. So I, I even though for as much as we talk about it being a starter cigar, it is not off limits to somebody who's more invested, I guess, for lack of a better word, of mm -hmm. into smoking cigars on a regular basis. I agree. That, that, that's a really good point, John, because what I was thinking as you were talking is, you know, when I'm in the store here and guys come in looking for cigars, I'll just start helping them if the guys are busy. And guys have said to me, what's a good cigar? I smoke once in a while during poker, during golf. Yes, this is, I think, mm. a cigar for that guy that likes cigars but doesn't smoke a lot. He's going to love this. It's not going to overpower him, but it's very flavorful. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great I, anytime cigar, yeah. Mm -hmm. really I'm getting is. some of that saltiness that uh, Jared talked about, uh, especially in the, in the, in the, uh, the cold draw pre-late. In fact, I got that in the baseline, too, so I'm going to say that's going to be pretty consistent. And saltiness is not a bad thing. No, it's a, actually, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a, kind of neat. Um, I'm also getting uh, base flavors of um, sweet spice, which I like, mm -hmm. and uh, some earthiness, which you're going to get, you know, with that, you know, Nicaraguan in there. And um, you know, it's just um, 
I'm getting a little bit of, I can't even read my handwriting. Uh, <laughs> oak. Oh, oak. 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 Wood. Yeah. Little, okay. Uh, oaky wood. So, you know, listen things. to the flavors you're describing. Mm -hmm. Oak right. and salt mm -hmm. and cedar and, and sweet spice. Yeah. And you guys, I was talking about like a crisp tree, kind of like an apple. What's that? Apple. Like yeah. tartness. You're talking mm. about creaminess. This is about a Connecticut wrapper cigar, which are not typically so abundant in flavor, right? Right. So in complexity. You, yeah. I mean, so is, I would, well, it's, it's complex to a point, but I would actually argue that it's more, it's, it's offering you more in terms of fuller flavor. Let's say the flavors are more intense than the smoke is, that's for sure. It's, it's mellow throughout, but when it comes to the intensity of the flavors, like that, that's that tanginess that I'm getting, that saltiness. Yeah. So maybe that's kind of where that tart sweet is coming from. That mm. woodiness, a little bit of earth. They really come on strong. But the interesting things is at different points, you kind of start pulling some of the handles and some of the levers back and forth. So while the woodiness might draw down, you mm. might see the creaminess come up. I mean, you know, you might see the spice. Somebody's kind of just jiggling the spice handle a little bit back yeah. and forth. <laughs> jiggling. Yeah. Just jiggling. You know. It's so definitely you get it a little bit down, up, down, up, down. You yeah. know. But then all of a sudden, somebody takes. You know the uh, the salty lover puts it on full. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's and it's kind of nice, this nice woody, salty kind of. But the, again, this is a Connecticut cigar. For mm -hmm. it to be able to pour off these these more intense flavors, they're not huge changes between the flavors. But I notice the changes in the intensity of the flavors. Yeah, so it's it's much more complex than you would get out of your average. Connecticut wrapped, yeah, like mellow. So many it's certainly not mellow in any. Yeah. any you, know. you were talking about you know flying in the face, right? Yeah. This is the cigar, or one of the cigars, I should say, that flies in the face of that that misconception that you can't get a lot of flavor unless you have a lot of strength. This is. I would agree with. A ton that. of flavor. Yeah. It's not like I was saying earlier. It's not heady. It's not. It's not kicking me in the gut. Anything like that. And this is our first cigar of the day, and I'm eating or uh, smoking this on an empty stomach. So. <laughs> Not Which is rare, let me tell you that right <laughs> now. Yeah. It's not donut time yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I'm, see. I'm seeing the um, another consistency from yes. the baseline, and then the ash is... Now, Tom, you said your first one was... The ash was kind of flaky. On both my samples, this one and the first, the ash is really firm. Oh, this yeah, is... Yeah, I didn't have that either. Yeah. I didn't have it. Yeah, I'm more than an inch down. This doesn't it's just even hanging want to, in there. This doesn't want to fall off. Yeah. No, this no. is... Constructed extremely well, the draw is excellent. It, a full mouthfeel of smoke with this thing. Any, any other mm -hmm. thoughts here? No, but um, I'll also agree with Jared on the retro hail. It's 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 nice and smooth. It's Soaking. not yeah. you know that pepperiness that you get. Maybe later on it'll get. I a was little. just gonna say, you know what? From from the couple that we smoked earlier, mm -hmm. uh, this is probably my third, I think. Maybe. Okay. What I did notice was if you if you retro hail your cigars. Which you don't have to, but some say that's a good way to kind of get some of the extra flavors out of them. True, uh, it's an acquired skill, uh, but it's it's one of those things you'll notice. That's kind of where a lot of the spice hides out, is in the retro hail. Mm -hmm. And early on, so this is probably about an inch to two and a, an inch and a half in. There's a little bit of spice in the retro. You get farther down, about halfway through, there's more spice coming through in the retro. You start getting down to where you're about to get be done. There's a significant amount of spice coming through on the retrohale. It's not so much noticeable on the smoke as it's hitting your palate, but as, as if you're retrohaling it, there's definitely some extra spice hiding out in there towards the end of the smoke. My experience, yours, your mileage may vary. No, I, I just, may vary. I just <laughs> did the retrohale, I didn't retrohale this, and you're absolutely right, you get a lot more spice. Sometimes, you know, with a stronger cigar, when you retrohale and it goes through the nasal passage, you get like a sting, and you know yeah, that it yeah. stings That's on where the cigar the scorpion like that. Is. Like a, the, the scorpion <laughs> isn't stinging, and and that really is exactly what you said, John. It's kind of just you pick up a lot of spicy flavor mm. through the through the nasal passage. I think I'm picking up that almost that citrusy in the uh, in the retro too. Oh, that's that definitely. But I'm not getting on. I'm not getting on, yeah. a, on a regular draw. It's, it's you know just different intensities. that kind of hide out and yeah. pulling the levers, man. Right. Well, you know, um, they also make this in a sun grown, which is a little bolder, mm -hmm. to use their terms. Now, have you and, guys, um, any of you smoked the sun grown? Or yes. No? Yes. And? It's definitely got a little Excellent. more kick. And yeah, I would think so. A little so. more complexity. So, uh, here, so here's a so thought for you, try. right? So if this, if this is a good intro, maybe you've smoked your way through a box of these, and you say, okay, kind of like this. I like where this is going. Your next step up might be the sun grown. 
because it's got a little bit different different style of flavors. It's it's a different style of cigar, a little, a little bit more oomph to it right out of the gate, as opposed to slowly maturing throughout the course of you know however mm -hmm. many you know inch two inches or whatever the case is. Uh, but that's that's a case where it's, it provides a natural progression for you to you got a good you got something you know you enjoy. You want to take a step up and mm -hmm. up your game a little bit. Sun Grown is a very good next step off the back of the Camacho Scorpion Connecticut. I agree, and you know. When it comes to the uh, the quality of, of their cigars, I mean, Camacho's, you know, pretty tough to beat. And I would definitely smoke this mm -hmm. in the morning. I'm, I'm smoking it now in the morning with this, with coffee. It's great with coffee. And I agree, you could smoke it in the afternoon with a beer, you know, or in the evening with something after dinner, or a bourbon or whatever. It just seems to go with everything. And that's what I like about it too. And also, it has that nice sweet spiciness that I'm I'm pretty crazy about. So this this is definitely you know in my wheelhouse. It's hitting all the right marks for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, how about you? Well, if I'm going to close it out, I, I like what you just said about that. It goes with anything, and you could have this with a bourbon or a scotch after dinner. And you say, how could you have a cigar like a lighter kind of cigar like that? Because there's so much damn flavor in here, and, and a bunch of different flavors. Um, Sometimes what happens is if you don't pair a cigar right with your type of drink, um, the cigar can overpower the drink, or the drink can overpower the cigar. It depends on it. This is not going to overpower your bourbon, so I think you're going to taste the bourbon, then you're going to taste this. There's just so much flavor. It's definitely, to me, mellower in character and mouthfeel and, and creaminess than any other Camacho, but there's so much flavor here. I'm definitely smoking more of these, especially for the price point, I would say. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the price is right, flavor is right, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. <laughs> I don't know a better way to put it than that. Mm -hmm. Get you on board easy. Well, I think many Connecticut's are often a one-trick pony, right? You get some pretty mm -hmm. basic, a, a basic flavor and that's it. Yeah. The Scorpion Connecticut is more, it has maybe one and a half, maybe two tricks. If, if we're going to put it in, the, in that kind of a discussion, uh, and, and that was actually one of the reasons why we liked it for our top 25 of 2018. New cigars for 2018 yep. came out at the very end of last year. Uh, we finally got a chance to sit down and smoke our way through the better part of a box. But why I would recommend this cigar? Why, John? First is because at $6 and change, it's not eye-rollingly expensive. And second is because it's not boring. And too often mm -hmm. you get a, a Connecticut cigar gets a reputation as just being boring, uh, but this falls into a class where I hate to say it's you know the new breed of Connecticut and you know the full body mild medium you know whatever, but this is this is a case where flavor exceeds expectation in terms of intensity, based on what you might see just a modest Connecticut wrapper. There's really a lot of flavor hidden inside and. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself and see. But and that's would, why I'd recommend it. I would say, John, that the audience has just learned a new word in the English language. Eye-rollingly. I, I, I enjoy that. Oh, you do? I will make a word out of anything. Thank you. <laughs> that's John Poole, everybody. All right. Well, don't forget that you can buy the Scorpion by Camacho cigars at famous-smoke.com. So make a note of that. And you can also follow cigaradvisor.com on our website. You can also see us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. So, doing it for the gram, we, uh, baby. Doing it for the gram. We're all in agreement. This is a good one. Oh, yeah. I like. All right. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Happy smokes.